Hi everyone, we're, uh, I'm Joel, this is Erica. We run Free Union Grass Farm. Uh, we started it about five years ago or four years ago and, uh, and um, we raise uh, chicken, beef, uh, duck, uh, free range eggs, all on pasture, all eating grass. And uh, we started out with a very low budget and we would grow pretty successfully based on using the internet, uh, Facebook, Instagram, a little bit of Twitter, um, and a really nice website. So uh, we feel really proud of what we accomplished and we owe a lot of credit to social networking. So hopefully uh, we can uh, teach you a little about that. Um, so social media are basically virtual communities um, where people can create and share and exchange ideas, photos, information, articles, all sorts of things. Um, most of the time those websites are free um, and they're used by lots and lots of people, different economic and cultural groups. So um, it's a great way to contact a lot of different people. Um, what we've learned with our farm is that um, when you're doing something that's even remotely interesting, Generally, your customers want to find a way to be a part of what you do. And they want to know more about you, they want to learn about you, and they want to see what you're doing. Um, a lot of the time, for example, our farm, we're not that far away, but a lot of people's farms are really far away. And social media allows you to bring what you do to people's fingertips. Um, the internet is so common these days, and often we have it in our pockets with our phones. So it's a way to connect with people wherever they are. Um, oh, wait, one oh, sorry. Um, and what the other thing we've learned too is that using social media is a great way to connect with people and share information about your product. Um, but there's a fine line between um, connecting with people and advertising to them. So you have to be conscious of the difference. Um, and I'll talk more about that. Um, so the, the main forms of, uh, of uh, um, connecting we use is Facebook and Instagram. We don't know a whole lot about Twitter, so we can't uh, give you a lot of information on that. But we've had a lot of success with Facebook and uh, Instagram because of the great pictures, the great quality, and being able to network with uh, like-minded people. Um, and then there are some other modes of the online connection. Obviously, um, email is a great way to connect with people. It's not technically social media, but we do have some customers ask if we have an email list, and it's a great way to connect with them in more of an advertising way, if that's what you need, to let them know about farmer's market, what products you may have available during a certain week, et cetera. And then also, um, our website is something that we already have, um, so we can upload content to that as we see fit. Um, we wanted to create something like a field notes section where people can learn more about us on a personal level. That's a great place to do that. And then um, also blogging, which is another way of doing that. Uh, Blogspot and other similar websites allow you to post a lot of written or photographic content uh, to access people as well. So. Um, first of all, I know you guys are all going to go and like Free and Grass Room on Facebook, right? <laughs> um, so what we've learned through our posts is that, by and large, people people don't want to hear about how crappy your day was. We, won't, we don't want to get on Facebook for our grass farm page and post, wow, this is awful weather, the cows hate it. No one's going to like that or comment that or share. Um, so, but if, for example, if we're passionate about a certain issue or, you know, we are avid environmentalists and foodies and if we want to, you know, share something that we're heated about, that can be a great way to get people to engage with your comment or your photo. That's where if people have an opinion about it, even if it is something negative, they may be more likely to comment or share it with someone else. Um, but most of all, like Joel was saying, what we do the most is just post beautiful pictures that anyone can like. So whether they care about green and grass farm or not, if someone sees a beautiful picture of a baby cow, they're probably going to like it for no reason whatsoever. Even if they don't know who we are, they don't live in Charlottesville, and they've never bought our product and probably never will. But their liking it allows other people to see it and be exposed to it. We found that it, creating the brand uh, with Facebook has been a lot more beneficial than using Facebook to just tell people where we are at a given day or what we're doing, but just really helping promote what we do and why it's great has been, we think, successful. And people have responded to that. Um, so yeah, another way to really engage people on Facebook is to use, um, in addition to nice photos, uh, clever captions, things that people would think are funny, um, ask questions, things that engage people and make them want to respond and comment. Um, 
So I'm assuming that most of you guys have some familiarity with Facebook. If you don't, I know there's a boot camp later where you'll learn all about it. Um, but there are different <laughs> weights of things, comments, likes, and shares. Um, likes have the least amount of weight, comments have slightly more, and shares have the most. So if you go on and like one of our photos, that exposes it to some people. Commenting on it exposes it to even more, and sharing it exposes it to exponentially more. So when we post things, we're trying to find a way to access the most people. Um, and what we've also learned is people like your stuff, but they don't necessarily want to see it all day, every day. So we try to keep our posts to once a day at the most, sometimes once every couple days, or maybe once a week. Um, if there isn't as much happening at the farm. Um, and then I think the main reason we were asked to do this conference is because we were uh, we managed to link up with another Facebook group called Experience Charlottesville that has like 70,000 followers or something similar to that number. Um, and they, they simply shared a photo that we posted and all of a sudden in the space of one day we gained like 400 new followers. So if you can reach out to those groups that are similar to what you do um, and have a large following, send them a message on Facebook, ask permission if you can post something to their page. It's a way to find similar minded people and perhaps garner a whole new following. Um, Instagram is something that's been around for a little while but it's gaining more popularity now. Um, uh, I started using a lot more. It's a great way to take pictures and then there's a program that filters it which basically can add contrast and brighten the colors and make it an average photo look a lot better. So it kind of uh, uh, can create more buzz online. Um, it's often used with your smartphone. So if you carry a smartphone and you have a camera on your phone, you have it anytime available at your fingertips. Uh, I found that it's a little more artistic than Facebook, and, and so it's a way to, uh, our Facebook, we try to keep fairly polished and, and don't kind of uh, uh, push the envelope, I guess, but with uh, Instagram, you know, we kill a couple thousand chickens every year, so, you know, with Instagram, you can maybe take some more artistic photos with that, and kind of, you can kind of create a following with people who want a more in-depth approach. Um, and. Uh, also, uh, uh, hashtags are kind of taking hold, so hashtags are a great way to connect you with other people who want to learn about the same things. So if we're doing pastured chicken and hashtag that, which is you put a number sign followed by uh, no space, uh, you know, uh, hashtag, uh, you'll, and click on that hashtag, you'll be able to see all the other people who are also posting pictures of pastured chicken, and that's, uh, Believe it or not, it's a fairly unique hashtag. So there's only a couple thousand people posting photos like that. So it's an amazing way to link up with those people and get more exposure. So and with hashtags, you also have some that can be very utilitarian, such as like in this photo here of Joel um, out with our cows in the field. Joel's you know username on Instagram is at Freegrass Farmer. So he would tag himself in that photo so that you know, or if I posted, I would tag him in it. And then pasture with the pound sign in front of it is a hashtag that potentially has more chance of people searching for it and then finding our photo and finding and connecting with us. Cattle, grass fed, those are also very utilitarian hashtags. But we found that there's a place for more esoteric or funny hashtags like stormy skies, when it rains it pours, love my cows. And a classic, my cows are vegan, so you don't have to be. Um, the idea being that if you have something that's even remotely funny, even if people don't care about the picture or you or the other hashtags, they might give you a like because they think that's clever. So we found that there's a place for both. And if you wonder why you know we, we strive for likes or comments or shares, it's because we do see a recognizable uh, interest in our farm at Farmer's Market and through uh, you know, accessing restaurants. People know us, they've heard of us more. Even though we're a really small farm, there's a lot of other farms doing what we do you know, at a bigger scale. We often stand out because we have such an online presence. So we've, actually, we've noticed tangible results from doing this. Even though it seems a little crazy or, 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 or frivolous, it really does, it does work. Yeah, and it's a great, you know, not everything. I think when people start a farm, they, they want to see the numbers on paper. And it's important to realize that not every, you know, mode of success is quantifiable. I think there's a real um, value in connecting with people on a personal level. And we haven't found a way to exactly translate 
Facebook likes to dollars, but um, when people feel that you're out there and they've seen your name before and say they're in the supermarket and they see our chicken up against someone else's chicken um, or something even more novel like you know, I don't know, our steak versus someone else's, they might choose our steak simply because they've heard our name before. So putting yourself out there and being present um, in free online forums is a, is a great way. And because of these free online forums, we haven't spent a dime on advertising, so yeah. it's great. So like I said, we don't really use Twitter very much, but there are millions of other people who do. So we figured it um, would be reasonable to talk about. Essentially, it's, um, it's like a microblogging service where people tweet. So it's a miniature status update that's about 140 characters or less. Um, that can be a clever insight to your day. It can be a link to an article. It can, um, you know, it can tag other users on Twitter, people you follow. Um, and it's basically just the idea behind tweet being it's a short, brief, you know, inconsequential burst of information. Um, and that's really popular with a lot of people. We haven't used it very much, but, um, but I think social media, you know, fits some businesses better than others. So it may work really well for you. Um, Okay, so we've kind of told you what has been working for us. We're definitely not experts, but we're definitely relaying information that has worked very well for us. So don't necessarily, you know, do, you don't, if, if you're not, if your strong point is in pictures and you're great with words, you know, uh, you know, words without pictures, if it's clever and interesting and informative, it can be great. And obviously a lot of people do that. We are posting photos from Instagram to Facebook, which has been really effective in creating, you know, a, a, a better, looking Facebook page because we're taking photos with a beautiful filter and, and adding them onto Facebook, um, if that makes sense. Uh, we've noticed that we are meat farmers, so we prefer, it's kind of complicated because you want to post beautiful pictures of animals, but you're also implying that you're also going to eat those animals. So People don't like that. <laughs> we're still figuring that out, but you know, I've noticed that you know, when you do a field full of ducks you know, grazing in the field, you can post that one day, and then if you wait a few weeks, then maybe post a picture of a duck that's cut up and, uh, <laughs> and roast it on your dinner table. So that, that is a complicated thing. And, uh, um, but back to back doesn't generally jive very well with people. Yeah, <laughs> like cute baby duck followed by you know a, a duck uh, leg cone feed and, and its own fat is not not great. Not good. So, um, yeah. So yeah, the other point being. Social media is a great way to engage with people, but the idea behind any sort of marketing idea is that you should be trying to bring something new to the table. Um, if you're doing something that everybody else does, even showcasing it with beautiful photos and social media may not help you. So as long as you're bringing something new to the table, people will perk their ears up and pay attention. So. Does anybody have <laughs> See, cute baby animals. <laughs> Two questions and then we're headed for break. Uh, I wanted to ask you, don't have a ton of people comment. Um, you know, I would say if we ask a question like where we post a caption contest, um, we may get some chatter and we try to go in and like those things, but we don't necessarily comment on all of them. And generally speaking, people aren't really posting anything to opinionate or controversial on our page. And if they do, we do just kind of let that lie. Um, do you have anything to add? Does that help? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we did have one person who was um, a farmer from somewhere else on one of our uh, pictures comment, you know, sort of like, tired of this product? Check out our product at our farm and tag our own farm. And we did delete it because it seemed very presumptuous and rude to post on it. Um, and a certain, I mean, it's like coming into my house and telling me that you can serve me something else for dinner, you know. So um, I think anytime you want to find a way to collaborate or connect with other people, it's just best to always ask permission. So just be respectful. I, th I think it has been really fun, and we've said this before, but I think Facebook and the internet can be really amazing for farmers because you know 
land is not affordable close to big cities where people go and uh, visit farms. So we have one farm tour a year and a lot of people come, but that's about it. So uh, it's we think it's really important so people remember who we are because they will forget if you don't have a storefront, if you don't you know have a farm close to Charlottesville, you need to make yourself known if you are direct marketing. So it's been really, uh, really great. And yeah, that's a good point. We do direct market almost everything we grow. Um, and so when we were starting out, we used resources like the local food hub because we hadn't made those connections with chefs yet. And it was a fantastic way for us to just, you know, like, oh my gosh, we're so fried from farming. Take it, sell it. It was really helpful for us. But we did find that as we grew, it was more meaningful for us to really, you know, take it right into the restaurants. It's, it's a skill we have. It's something we enjoy doing. Um, and so that works really well for us. Anything else? Great. I think we're going to go into break. And, Thank um, you.